Hello and welcome to this new part of the Usta Sequencer tutorial and today we are going to run through the Usta menus and uh, through its architecture. I must add the disclaimer that when I am filming this Usta is currently running firmware 155 so some things might change with future updates. As you may already know the biggest unit in the Usta Sequencer is the project which can be thought of as your song file or your performance file. When starting up Usta automatically creates a project named no name unless you already created a project and in that case it will load the latest one. Every project contains four tracks that we access here. Every track contains 32 patterns that we can change here and every pattern contains 16 stages and every stage contains two CV information and two gate information and we output them through here. So we tried to bring all the parameters that you would normally need to tweak during a performance to the surface of the modules through um, buttons, uh, encoders or button combinations. But there are some uh, options that uh, you need to define through the menus. And generally speaking, we try to leave to the menus only those options that you need to set and forget perhaps before your performance, such as how fast should it go, which key is it gonna play in, and other parameters. Usta has two menus, the project menu and the track menu. And we wanted to keep the menu diving at minimum, so we laid all the options on the same hierarchical level. So once you access the menu, you will find all the information on the same page. The project menu, as the name suggests, contains all the options that affect the project as a whole, while the track menu is per track and contains all the information that relate to a track. So every track will have its dedicated track menu and uh, the options we set for track 4 might differ from the option we set for track 2. To access both menus we push the navigation encoder and use it to scroll the menu and set the options. If we simply push it we access the track menu corresponding to the track that we selected. If we change our track while in the track menu we will also change the track menu. So if I set my BPM value for track 1 and I change to track 2, I can see that the track menu corresponding to track 2 still retains the other and the default BPM value. To exit the track menu, I just have to push the ESC button. To enter the project menu, I need to push and hold for 3 seconds the navigation encoder. Now the menu will be the same regardless of which track I selected and as a matter of fact I can no longer use those buttons while in this menu. And here I can find all the functions that can work at the project level or higher such as new, load and so on. Now let us start by looking at the project menu options one by one. New creates a new project. Load allows us to load a project, save allows us to save the current project and save as allows us to create a new file. Then we have the delete option that allows us to select and delete a project. Rename allows us to change the name of an existing project and those were the project uh, management functions, so to speak. The aux target option defines the behavior of this input here that can receive gates or triggs. By default it works as a reset, so automates the reset button, but it also has four run options that are useful in case you want to run the Usta sequencer with an external clock that sends play, stop and reset uh, signals. We will explain more in details this behavior in another video. Then we have the option that allows us to define which of the four track is the master track. 
and this is useful for advanced play and reset functions, but by default it is the track one. Show in play is a display tool that you may use in performance mode. So by default it is set to no, but if you activate this function and then play your track and access the performance mode, so grain pencil, you will see that the dashboard automatically displays the values for each stage that it is currently playing in case you have uh, you want to monitor what is going on so if i change for example my cva values i'm going to input them at random like this and also my cvb values and my gate a as well and then return to performance mode i can see that all the values are instantly updated and displayed stage by stage the zero volt is menu voice defines whether the zero volt so the value that usta starts counting the octaves starts from c which is the default behavior or a if i set it to a my stages of a new track will start from a The all edit option allows us to define the behavior of the mod buttons here, set all and shift all while editing the stages of a pattern. By default, we have the from behavior that we explained in a previous video. So if I set either set all or shift all and rotate a stage encoder, I will change only the stages after it. If I change this option, and set it to all i will now change all my stages regardless of where i do rotate it so i am changing all the stages of a pattern both after and before it and then we have the temperament function that we explained in a previous video here we choose if the temperament should be absolute or relative an absolute temperament will stay fixed regardless of the root and scale settings, so it will make the same scale sound different with different roots. A relative temperament, on the other hand, will transpose along with the root and scale settings. And finally, we have the replace firmware button that we will use if we want to update our USTA. And then we have the track menu. All the four track menus are the same, so we will focus on the first track. The first option is the internal BPM, which by default is 120, and with firmware 155, we introduce the fine BPM, which adds up to 99 cents to the BPM value expressed by the previous menu voice. Then we choose the clock source, which can be internal or external, and then we choose the clock to unit ratio. Then we have the swing parameter, which adds a swing, as we explained in other videos. And then we choose the track mode, which can be pattern, as we already explained in other videos, or song. This activates the song mode, that will be the subject of another video. With these menu voices here, we can choose whether our CVA and B of the selected track should output notes or row voltages. We can have both of them outputting row voltages or pitch voltages or a mixture of the two, like the default setting where CVA output notes and CVB outputs row voltages. With these two next voices, we can choose whether CVA and B should be unipolar, like zero to 10 volts, or bipolar, plus 5 or minus 5. And we can change this setting independently for each CV. Then we have the root and scale menu voices. Root selects the root note and scale selects the scale mask referred to the root note. And then we have the quantization options.
And then we have the gate percentage menu voices for gate A and gate B. These two voices apply only when our gate colors are set to green. If you remember, this creates a ratcheting effect so it outputs as many gates as the LED number we select for this stage, as opposed to the blue value where the number of LED defines the portion of the stage that outputs a gate high signal. The gate percentage width selects for these stages here set to repeat mode how wide the gate should be. By default it is set to 50 so in this case the portion of a gate high signal will be exactly half the space between two consecutive gates but I can set it from a minimum of 10 which is a very thin pulse to a maximum of 90 and I can change this setting independently for the gate A and for the gate B. And then we have two menu voices that refer to the reset behavior of the track. This will be the topic of another video, but it allows us to define how the track should respond to the reset button. After that, we have the external CV routing options. So these from pitch shift A pitch shift B, root shift, stage shift, pattern shift, phase shift and gate shift and vary shift and the pattern recall are the possible destination for the CV that we patch to this input here. This will also be the subject of a detailed video but for now we can say that from here we can assign every modulation source to every modulation destination. After that, we have the tones per octave option that allows us to define how many semitones are within each octaves. And after that, we have the root and scale option for each equal division of the octave, 15, 19, 22, and 24. And these are all the menu voices of the Usta sequencer as of today. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you next time.